All right, what is going on, guys, gals, non-binary pals? Welcome back to another episode of Beacon Pines. Uh, I hope y'all are having a wonderful day so far. I know I am, and uh, let's jump right all back into it. Whoosh! No whoosh. <laughs> We're having problems. Get there it goes. Okay. Chapter eight. All right. Yeah. Here we go, guys. The cold hard, hard truth. truth. Beck leapt up, allowing the suction to yank her into the dark. Dimness eclipsed around her like the shutter of a camera as she seemed to cover great distance in mere moments. Her only points of reference were glints of upcoming turns, which approached with frightening speed, only to carry her gracefully along. She heard the tinny, distant echoes of Rollo's glee. <laughs> Once she stopped fighting against it, the ride was impossibly smooth. Then, all of a sudden, as if minutes had passed in an instant, light blazed into view. A burst of wintry air snuffed across her face, and she was flung out into the cold. Oh! That's what that is. Oh no, they're all gonna learn the truth. That was... intense? Uh, I think I might have <laughs> I think I might have parted with some fluids in there. Any idea where we are? Somewhere cold. Oh my gosh, Luca. Yes, of course. Of course it's somewhere cold. Doesn't look like uh doesn't look like it got on any of us. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I don't feel like we've traveled that far. So where did it all go? Oh my god, Rolo. This place sucks. Why would anyone even want to blow something up out here? Only one way to find out, I suppose. We gotta catch up to Nuncreed. I think he went this way. Catch up to Mr. Nuncreed. Well, can we do that? But can I, like, wander? Nothing? Oh, okay. All right, we're coming, Mr. Nunfree. Can we talk? Can we? Oh, we can't look at the sign. Oh gosh, this looks familiar. Yeah, maybe we can clear off the snow. No time. Nuncreed's getting away. Oh, oh, children. Oh. Okay, this is starting to feel really familiar. I may not be the most well-versed on all things Beacon Pines, but this does look like some sort of frozen replica of town. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ah, I got it. Ooh, ooh, ooh. It's so obvious now. Ooh, 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 ooh. Mr. Duncreed is an alien. Rollo, ooh, ooh, ooh. stick with me here. Ooh, 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 ooh. His species can only live on sub-zero temperatures. Oh boy, here we go. The source is their base camp dimension, so naturally, they keep it cold. Oh my god, Rolo. We found it by traveling through these metallic wormholes back there. Final objective? Kill us all and shapeshift into Beacon Pines citizens of their choosing. You never really had me, but you very much lost me there. You get used to it. We should keep moving. Can I... can I poke around and look at things? No? Okay, here we go. As they oh. rounded the corner to the frozen town square, they spotted Mr. Nuncreed inching cautiously toward a pit at its center. He held his arms out gingerly, as if approaching a beast in the wild. Also, I had a, uh, an epiphany of about about Graham, but I'm not gonna say what it is. I wanna see. Yeah. Upon closing the distance, Luca recognized what Nuncreed was after. 
Grand stood confidently at the edge, one arm outstretched over the abyss. Nearby, a wheelbarrow had been emptied out. She held a lit torch, which flickered in the bitter wind. Don't do it, Grand. Juniper, I don't know what you think you're doing. But I assure you, this is not going to solve anything. If you drop that, you've doomed this whole town. Oh, it wasn't me who doomed this town. I've been watching you, Joseph. I know what you've done. You and your co-conspirators. Gran? What's happening? Luca, you and your friends need to leave right this moment. Mr. Nuncree turned back toward the kids, desperation in his eyes. Listen to your grandma, Luca. This is between me and Juniper. Rolling back held steadfast in awe. Luca approached closer. Mr. Nuncreed spun back toward Grand, his voice growing louder. You've got it all wrong, Juniper. Just hand over that torch. You don't understand what you're doing. How could I possibly trust you to do the right thing? Walt told me everything. He trusted you. And you betrayed that trust. Luca, did you know that this man's entire life is a lie? If it weren't for him, your father might still be alive. Mr. Nuncreen winced with anguish. His voice hardened. That's not true. They both now yelled, not to each other, but at fate itself, making their peace with long-held burdens. The wind howled with encouragement. Walt was like a brother to me. We just had different ideas about how to effect change. So, just just in case it like does it here. Uh, so the the thing that I was sitting here thinking about. So the kids found a death record for his grandmother, right? Well, that puddle of goo, like episodes back, that splashed onto Iggy and like made like half his face really old. I highly doubt it, but gosh, the plot twist if it was, if Gran was actually just Luca's mom, but aged up, like, you know, like, aged older. Part of me, like, part of me just really wants that to happen, but at the same time, I'm just like, yeah. Just, I don't know. I wanted to get that out <laughs> before this goes on, and it possibly is not like, oh, it is true, or it isn't true. I don't know. It's just, that's how, that's, that's a thing I've been thinking about. Uh, we just had different ideas about how to affect change. Very convenient that your way just happened to line your pockets. Now that's not fair. They menaced at each other, both catching their breath. The moment balanced on a knife's edge. Oh, Amid mean, a blur oh. of emotions and memories. Luca's mind flooded with questions. The wind calmed, as if to give him the stage. Oh. And in the stillness, he began to weep or hum. Weep or hum. Let's have him weep. Well, I'm gonna have him hum just because that's so that's so out of nowhere i'm gonna have him hum and in the stillness he began to hum after the death of his father luca had trouble sleeping each night his mother would sit at the foot of his bed and hum a gentle melody it was the only thing that could calm his mind the only thing that, however briefly, could make it all seem okay. That melody pervaded every memory Luca had of his mother. Shivering in the raw snow, he began to hum it out loud.
Gran lowered the torch, listening closely. As recognition slowly set in, her heart sank. Those countless nights of consolation. The incomparable loss they shared together. Oh my gosh, was I right? She let the torch fall to the snow and sizzle out. A few steps toward Luca was all she could bear before dropping to the snow herself. Through a flood of tears, she began to hum along, note for note. Oh my gosh, was I right? Was I right? I think I was right. Oh, I think I was right. How do you know? I'm so sorry. Oh, I was right. Oh, no. Oh, man. I'm so sorry, my little buckaroo. Oh, man. I think I was right. Buckaroo? The only people who call me that are my dad and... Your mother. Luca blinked through blurry, watery eyes, trying to see more clearly. Oh, no. He could just make out the impression of a familiar face. Oh, man. He peered across the snowscape at the woman on her knees. Something about her was undeniably his mother. Only smaller, older. Changed. Oh gosh. Mom? Oh yeah, I'm gonna cry. Oh, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna cry. Oh, that's right, Buckaroo. Mom? Luca sprinted as fast as he could toward his mother. They held each other close, and the cold retreated from their bodies. El Eleanor? I thought you were... gone? You should have known I would never abandon my son. Eleanor looked down at Luca, tightening her embrace in an appeal for forgiveness. How? You're a smart man, Joseph. I thought you'd have pieced it together by now. You were exposed. Mom, I don't understand any of this. What happened to you? Where did you go? Why did you leave me? I never left you. I was always right here, Luca. Why did you lie to me? It tore me up, Luca, but I did it to keep you safe. I thought that getting answers would help us both move on. But the more I discovered, the more I realized the danger we were in. Until perennial harvest was stopped, it was better if everyone thought I was gone. You could have trusted me. These are bad people, Luca. They won't stop until they get what they want. And they don't care who gets hurt in the process. Then, what do we do? We have to stop them. 
Joseph slumped into the cold, wet snow. They can't be stopped. This is too big. I tried beating them at their own game. I'm done fighting fire with fire. For the first time in a long time, her voice felt like her own again. No more lies. I see now. There's a better way to stop perennial harvest. The cold, hard truth. Luca gazed down at Nuncreed with pity. He looked small. Joseph stared into the snow, as if searching it for answers. Come on, everyone. We've got a party to crash. Bye, Mr. Nuncreed! Sit. You don't understand. He always wins. Chapter 9 The Devil You Know. Oh. But, oh, man. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, it's a, the thing, the thing with, with Gran being Luca's mom is a thing that I had been thinking about since, since last episode when they were all like, oh, yeah, no, that's my Gran's name. How can my grand be dead, <laughs> but be living with me? And I just, yeah. Seven months ago. Wow, okay. Eleanor Van Horn crept down the maze of sterile hallways under perennial harvest. She stopped in front of the large steel door marked Deep Engineering. Ooh. No turning back now. <gasps> oh my gosh. Are she we gonna... raised a trembling hand. The stolen key card worked as promised, and the door buzzed open with mechanical efficiency. She was immediately hit with the smell of disinfectant. It was some sort of laboratory. In one corner was a desk covered in papers. Across the room stood a tall metal pod with hoses protruding from its base. She rushed to the desk and began shifting through the piles of papers. They were experiment reports on something called Tempest Liquimen. There were dozens of them. Every one stamped, failed. Eleanor heard the sharp echo of footsteps approaching. She was out of time. Her eyes scanned the room, eventually landing on the strange pod. Muttering a curse under her breath, she dashed over and dove inside. Oh no. Oh, okay, so, so now we're back to the present. And that is what change is all about! Come on, Mom, let's go! Grabbing the future by the scruff of the neck and making things happen. Change is a choice! Let's, you know. I am tickled pink that we will all be making that choice together. How great is that? This man is a liar! Excuse me? I will not! Tell him, Mom. This town has a dangerous secret and perennial, perennial harvest only exists to keep it hidden. Nonsense. They picked up the whole damn town and moved it right under our noses. You aren't making any sense, dear. Mr. Kerr addressed the crowd with a sarcastic tone. Imagine such a thing. It's absurd and just plain impossible. They promised they could fix the foul harvest. They told us they would clean this place up. We just had to leave town for a few days. But while they had us evacuated, Miss Hartford, I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to... You're afraid of a lot of things, aren't you? You sniveling little worm. This is growing tiresome. A little help, please. Don't you all see? This festival is a sham. An excuse to have the whole town gather in one place. They're planning something awful. 
I don't know what, but these people are wicked. Oh, I hate this because like now he's just gonna make he's just gonna make mom just seem like ah. She's just some crazy old lady. Just ignore her. This is probably going to be a bad ending. Or something. Don't listen to her. She has absolutely no proof. I am the proof. I'm Eleanor Van Horn. Whispers filtered through the crowd. Well, aren't you just sneaky as the dickens? We all know Valentine's fertilizer was too good to be true. And now this whole town is paying the price. Ladies and gentlemen, I am so sorry about this disruption. My associates will take this obviously disturbed woman somewhere comfortable. So that she can get the help she needs. She's not the one who's disturbed. Oh, snap. Get him, Mr. Dudcreed. You two-timing clown. You all know there's something wrong with this town. It was just easier to look the other way. The truth is... Oh. Oh. <gasps> no! No! Oh my gosh, no! Is, is this what I think is happening? That's quite enough, Mr. Nuncreed. Torment dragged on Joseph Nuncreed's face. Oh my god, it is. Yes, sir. <gasps> oh my gosh, it is! What? Take them away. No, I want them to see this. Oh, this is this probably a bad ending. This is pro- this is- mm. Ah, oh, the ever-temptuous Eleanor Van Horn. You've been quite the thorn in my side. Like a weed that's burrowed in where it doesn't belong. I must confess, you look dreadful. He paused for a moment, plucking a piece of fuzz from his sweater and discarding it to the ground. Consider yourself in rare company. You managed to pull one over on me. It won't happen again. I knew you had some sort of plan to disrupt our little party. But alas, I expected something a bit more impressive than incoherent rambling. No matter. Your failures are yours to bear. Mr. Kerr? Yes, sir. It's a shame it was cut short. But thank you for that rousing, uh, orator? Or oratory. I will take it from here. Yes, sir, of course, sir. You have done quality work for me, William. You can look forward to the recompense we agreed upon. Kerr gave a bow of deference. Founder, you are most gracious. Gasps rippled through the crowd. Thankfully, we can dispense with the formalities from here on out. Solomon pulled a glass vial from his pocket. In one smooth motion, he downed its contents. A triumphant smile grew across Solomon's lips. You can all call me Sharper Valentine. Oh, I can't with this game, I swear. His body and face began to contort and expand as he disappeared into a belching green mist. Oh, shne- oh, sh what? What? No! 
Ah, so you didn't see that coming. Good. Sharper examined his new hands. Well, this is quite the improvement. Everything looks so much smaller now. Eleanor was right about one thing. This festival was a ruse. I wanted you all to witness my glorious return with your own eyes. Why does everyone look so downtrodden? This is a celebration, people. Maybe it would help if we set the mood. Mr. Kirby and dear, and reveal the sign. <gasps> ha! Wonderful! Sharper choked out a crude squawk of a laugh. Frustrated grumbles sprinkled through the crowd. Wow. Sharper, you malicious bastard! Oh, we got another. We got a. Just, I just, I was. Oh, man, I know that there's, like, you know, like, a moment is happening. But, oh, okay, I can't. Can I? Okay, yeah. I know a moment is happening right now, but I really want to know. So we finally got... Okay. Okay. I'm glad you're back so I can tell you to your face. You destroyed this town. We ain't gonna let you get away with it again. Sorry, this is not the time for audience participation. Some assistance, Mr. Kerr? William Kerr gave a subtle nod to the clipboards. You coward! Does anyone else have something to contribute? A helpless quiet settled over the crowd. I thought so. Did you all truly believe you could be free of me? A town of complete and utter fools. You people should be celebrating my return. You're certainly lost without me. And that leads me nicely to my children. Daddy! Daddy! <laughs> I gave you both the greatest gift a parent can give. He looks so happy, though. Oh, Gus looks so happy. I've never seen Gus this happy in the entire game. And I'm so sad because he is probably going to get just his hopes and his dreams just absolutely crushed in these next few words. I'm so sad now. The opportunity to prove yourselves in my absence. Squandered. <laughs> no, guys. To say I am disappointed would be an understatement. But I... Silence, Augustus. An adult is speaking. I don't know which is worse. A son who is completely useless. Or a daughter with such potential who inevitably... Let's me down. Eris, you fail me with uh, admirable contingent consistency. Thankfully, I was counting on it this time. Father, I have been wasting time, my dear. What have you accomplished? I was focused on cementing our legacy. Legacy? Who needs a legacy when you can just live forever? But what about... It's alright, kiddo. I'm afraid you suffer from a complete lack of imagination. There's no helping it. Now then, where is Joseph? You didn't take the opportunity to slip off, did you? Ah, oh, there he is! Everyone should give him a hand. None of this would have been possible without Joseph. I think you've said enough. Nonsense. The people deserve to know how helpful and loyal you've been. I only did what I did because he left me no choice. You always had a choice, Joseph. You were simply too weak to take it. No matter. Cheer up. 
You're about to be rich beyond your wildest dreams. You should follow Mr. Kerr's example. When I found him, he was in a sorrier state than any of you. An aging actor, desperate to recapture his youth. He played his part, and soon he'll be able to play the leading man again. Forever, in fact, if he remains loyal. That goes for all of you. Well, those who haven't already fettered away my goodwill. Beacon Pines is mine again. And I am willing to share its spoils in exchange for absolute loyalty. Are you saying William Curb was never in charge of Perennial Harvest? Ha! You think that puffed up blather skite. Blather skite? What the fuck is a blather skite? Okay, could accomplish could have accomplished any accomplished all of this. Dawn, I suppose it's time for your big exclusive. Sharper addressed the crowd with indignant pride. He'd planned this moment for so long that now, at the deed's fruition, it almost felt frivolous. You see, I needed a figurehead to hold things down while I orchestrated my return. Someone to misdirect, lie, and bilk this town for a spell. So, I invented William Kerr. Take your bow. You've earned it. Mr. Kerr flourished a preposterously elaborate bow. Ugh. Patrick C. Mon... Oh my gosh, how do you say it? Monte... Montesquieu? I can't say his last name correctly, so... I butchered that, I know I did. Uh, thespian extraordinaire at your service. Founder, I just want to thank you again for this opportunity. It was truly the role of a lifetime. Wait. So this Bill Kerr was a patsy the whole time? Now that your secret's out in the open, what's to stop this town from rising up against you? Oh, that's the delicious part. Fear. Thanks to our clipboards, I know what each and every person in this town fears most. And I will make those fears manifest for anyone who steps out of line. The choice is simple. I'm not afraid of you. <laughs> the young hero. I've kept an eye on you, boy. You and your friends made a habit of disrupting my plans. What a pity if things could have gone a, a bit differently. Oh. Oh. You might have had your moment of triumph, but that's fate for you. You can't do this. Oh, but I can. I have won. Never underestimate what a great man can do given time. And now, time is my plaything. Perhaps the most expensive thing I've ever bought. But well worth it. Ha! Sharper coughed up one final laugh and cracked his knuckles. Enough chit chat. Let's get to work, shall we? And so Sharper set about remaking the town in his own image. The fertilizer factory soon reopened for business. Sales rose steadily as more and more farmers across the countryside began to swear by its miraculous properties. Beacon Pines became famous. A secretive town that, for the right price, shared its gifts with all. Gifts that became more and more necessary in a world where winters grew longer and longer. The end. Ugh. This is wrong, but things are becoming clearer now. Ugh. You can feel it, right? We can't let Sharper win. He might just be the key to this whole thing. Let's see. 
Okay, so so I have two options. I could either go back and we could do weep, or we could go a good ways back. Mm. Man. Gosh, okay. I don't know which one I'd rather do. Like, we've been sitting here waiting for the... For the frickin' for the one for, for Mr. Duncreed, and I'm like, do we, do we, do we, um, just, ah. Um, uh, <sighs> Um, I'm trying to think. Because we, it's again, we can literally go two more. Okay. Let's do, let's try, we'll try weep. We'll try weep and just see what happens. Uh, weep! And in the stillness, he began to weep. It was all just too much. Falling to his knees, Luca whimpered softly. The tears crystallized as they hit the snow. Gran stared at Luca for a moment with warm sympathy. Remembering why this was all necessary. This will all make sense soon, Luca. Then everything can go back to normal. I promise. She stiffened up and brandished the torch at Mr. Nuncreed. You can't hide behind those people any longer, Joseph. Once their precious source is destroyed, we'll see where their loyalties lie. Oh, well, okay, this is a bad ending. So, all right, yay! Juniper, don't. Ignoring his final plea, Gran flung the torch into the deep darkness. Yep, yep. She smiled and exhaled in relief. Mr. Nuncreed moaned in resignation. The torch echoed as it ricocheted down the hole, punctuated with a thunderous thud. You see, Joseph, I've learned one very important lesson in life. If you want things to change, then you must be willing to... Before Gran could finish, the ground shook her to silence. time to spin around and run to Luca. Her attempt to shield him, an honorable but trifling act. Unflinching mm. love pitted against an unthinking horror. There was no contest. Her warm embrace froze in an instant. That is where they remain, fixed in place forever. Oh. And so... Our story ends on this melancholy scene. Ugh. In a town brought low by its secrets sits the frozen statues of a misguided band of meddlers. The end. Gosh. Well, that was dire. On the bright side, we finally figured out where all the ice is coming from. Now, we just need to find a way to deal with a mystic, unfathomable force of nature. Yay! All right. So! All right, let's go be mean to Mr. Duncreed then, apparently. God, we're going back a ways. There was a... There was a, <laughs> there was a malice lurking. Oh, gosh. There was a malice lurking behind those eyes like a trap ready to spring. What is with this music, man?
Ahsoka felt the weight of Nuncrete's hand on his shoulder. Something wasn't right. Yeah. He didn't know why, but something was telling Luca to get out of there. I just want this all to be over. Of course, I'm sure it'll all work out soon enough. I don't like this music, man. It's bothering me. I should get going. I told Roxy I'd check for Rolo at the treehouse. Is Rolo... Oh my gosh, is this the one? Oh my gosh, are we all the way... We're all the way back to where, like, I think, like, Rolo was still missing, and I don't even know if we've be met Beck yet if we're all the way back here. Holy crap. Luca twisted free of Nuncrete's grasp. Of course. Luca. You know your dad and I were good friends back in the day. You can come to me with anything. Anything at all. Yeah, how about nah? <laughs> how about nah? Is there any interactions with Kato and anybody? No? Okay, yeah, how about nah? Don't look at me. Stop watching me walk off. Oh. What are you doing, you little shuts? Yo, little shits. Oh, what does she have to say? He looked down and muttered in a gruff voice. Mama always told me my problems would look smaller once I grew up. But my problems always seemed to grow right along with me. Heavens, I sense big trouble ahead. Stop it, little, like... <laughs> Heckin' premonition, lady. Hi, Luca, what's up? You haven't seen Rolo around recently, have you? He doesn't come around here much. Not since they made a rule that he can only order decaf. Okay, we're gonna go talk to Griffin. And then I'll go talk to... To Solomon. Uh-huh. Hey, Griffin. Okay, never mind, we've already talked to Griffin. Alright, time to get this over with. Hey, dweeb. These festival decorations are a bit humdrum. Now, if I would throw a festival, it would be a thing to behold. Hmm, yeah. Mm hmm I agree, this is all more than a little sad. It's worse than sad. It's boring. What if we did a little something to spice things up? I'm listening. You know that festival sign waiting to be unveiled? It would be a shame if someone... The two scurried off, eagerly formulating a plan. Okay. Bye, dweebs. I know your secret. What is our book? What does our thing tell us? Wait at the treehouse in case Rolo shows up. Okay. But I want to see if I can talk to people just because we've got an entirely different route now. Oh. Identify yourself, please. Uh, Nelly Modwill. I work here now. I am, I am unable to locate you on our staff roll. Oh, I don't officially start until tomorrow. Mr. Kerr said I could come in early tonight to get a few things done. Hold, please. Clearance authorized. Thank you. Our harvest awaits. Our harvest awaits. Yeah. Hey, Jeff. Whoa! Uh, <laughs> you could get a wrench on the noggin sneaking up on a guy like that. Uh, Don't scare a man while he's junkin', Sonny. Evening, Jeff. Isn't it kind of late to be junkin'? Uh, I might as well ask the same thing of you. Find anything good? Uh, bah! Ever since perennial harvest moved in, even the junk is trash. You can learn a lot about a person by looking at what they throw away. But this bunch, it's all shredded paper and coffee cups. Well, I'd better get going. I didn't see nothing if you didn't see nothing. See what? Exactly. <laughs> Okay, uh... Nope. Eh, stuck! I'm stuck! Okay. 
to the treehouse. Ba -da -da -da. Hey, Jetson. Have you seen Rolo come this way by any chance? Afraid not. As elusive as the fish in this here pond. All right. Well, we gotta go to the. Okay, Rolo. Hello, Rolo. He aired a long holler into the woods. Oh boy, Rolo! <laughs> oh, Rolo, wherever you are, I hope you're okay. Luca felt his eyes getting heavy and plopped into the beanbag. Pop. He conceded to its lumpy embrace. Yeah, I was gonna say, it's like, shoot, this took us back a, a good ways. Once again, Luca found himself in a vast black expanse. These freaking creepy dreams again, man. This time, he knew exactly where to go. He took a single confident step forward. The world flickered and pulsed. He found himself standing in front of the frigid air of a blazing campfire. The source. He plopped down cross-legged and gazed into the cold flame, waiting. Soon enough, the fire began to die out, popping sporadically, until all that was left was a single ember. Lucas stood up and dusted himself off. He plucked the glowing ember from the cold ash, examined it, and slid it into his pocket. A keepsake. The voice of his father spoke behind him. You made me proud, buckaroo. Luca turned to face him. What is this place? A warm grin grew across his father's face. A place where everything that has been and everything that could be all wait together. Luca found himself staring at his father's face, trying as hard as he could to memorize every single detail. Wait? For what? Another voice spoke out as Lucas Doppelganger stepped forward. That's up to you. Without knowing why, Luca began to weep. Is, is any of this real? Are you real? Luca's father bent down to smudge away a tear. Of course. I'm as real as the part of you that misses me. Luca turned to look at the older version of himself. And you? The doppelganger choked back tears. I'm as real as the part of you that's angry he's gone. Does that make sense? Through his tears, Luca laughed. <laughs> I think so. His father pulled him in for an embrace. Time to go, buckaroo. Luca was stolen oh, from his dream by a banging on the floor. Oh my gosh, is it Rollo? Are you in there? A commanding voice rumbled from below. Just as Luca sprang to lock the entry hatch, the door knocked open. Okay, I don't think it's Rollo. Oh, sh oh, sh Chapter 5. Dangers big and small. Oh, man. Okay. All right. <laughs> I hate it, but this seems like this is going to be a big thing. So I sadly have got to, let me check, make sure it's saved. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I sadly, I'm just going to, I'm going to, I'm going to have to end the episode there. Yeah. Before we get into any, like anything super big. So yeah, I know, I know I'm a horrible person, but <laughs> But yeah, leaving it on a cliffhanger like that. But we at least now, like my 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 question about about Gran, we know that that's true. 
We also know that Solomon is not who he says he is. We know that he is, in fact, Sharper Valentine. <sighs> we just have to get back to where that all is. Yay. Because <laughs> it threw us, we were at what, chapter 9? It's thrown us all the way back to chapter 5? But, well, I don't know. It's whatever, it is what it is. So, we'll see what happens in the next episode. <laughs> but, uh, if you guys like what you saw, leave a like, drop a comment, uh, push that subscribe button, ring the bell for notifications on any time I post videos. Uh, the link to the channel Discord, as well as my Twitch channel, is going to be in the description below if you'd like to check either one of those out. That'd be great. Awesome. And that's it. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Peace.